Hey guys, MVC here for the Team Digmatize YouTube page, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at this, the Aurora R4, a four-tower gaming system featuring an Intel i7-3820 processor clocked at 3.8 GHz, and on top of that, AMD have also decided to send out an AMD Radeon R290 graphics card to upgrade it with. Now, if you want to point out that if you do go onto the Anywhere website today, you will be purchasing the i7-4820K processor clocked at 3.9 GHz, the step above this, and on top of that, the AMD graphics card I'll offer there is the 2 90x again the step above but what I guarantee is after you see the single player and multiplayer benchmarks we've got here today things like Battlefield 4, Crisis 3, Tomb Raider and so on and so forth you're going to be more than happy with this and going to a step up is just going to be even better you'll be blown away but yeah I hope you enjoy the video guys if you've got any questions or comments throughout just leave them below and if you're new to upgrading a system such as the Alienware we'll also give you a step-by-step -step guide to inserting your new graphics card but yeah I hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you at the end for my final thoughts. So before we jump into the GPU installation and look at the game benchmark results, let's first have a look at the setup of our Anywhere Aurora R4 system. So as mentioned, we got an Intel i7-3820 at 3.8 GHz. That's inside of an Alienware X79 LGA2011 chipset based motherboard. The CPU is of course water-cooled in a closed loop and we got 8GB of RAM in 2x4GB sticks. Now the games and operating system are running off an Alienware 1TB 7200 RPM drive and the power supply powering the entire thing is an Anywhere 875 watt, which is more than capable of handling our new graphics card that we will be installing, the AMD Radeon R9290, which recommends a 750 watt power supply. Now, our new graphics card runs at 947 megahertz core clock speed and has 4 gigabyte of GDDR5 graphics memory, which does mean you, of course, cater to those high resolutions and, in fact, higher than what we are benchmarking with here today on a high refresh rate 1080p gaming monitor. So in fact, more like triple display perhaps. And with that, we've got support for up to four displays through the use of DisplayPort. Our other inputs are of course, Dueling DVI-D, two of them, and HDMI. Now the HDMI and DisplayPort 1.2 will carry the audio and the Dueling DVI and the DisplayPort will carry high refresh rates for those monitors. Now talking about design of the graphics card itself, I'm very much a fan of the single fan design, quite simply because that's gonna mean hot air gets pushed outside of the case, which is particularly a great thing if you're looking to future-proof yourself as if you add another card down the line, it's not gonna be keeping hot air inside of the case, all the cards will be pushing hot air straight out of the back. Now, the graphics drivers are going to be using for this review are AMD Catalyst Software Suit 13.12 and any footage displayed with FPS has been captured using a second machine and a capture card. So the FPS you do see here displayed throughout is what you should expect to get at home using an identical setup. So five quick and easy steps to installing a new graphics card to your Aurora. Step one, lift up the flap at the top and pull the side panel out. Now it's very important you statically decharge yourself so either touch the inside of the case or a special wristband. After that, find an available PCIe 3 port and slot the graphics card in until it clicks. It's usually the top one and some people like to do this with the case flat. But after that, Make sure you screw the graphics card in for extra support. Now I tend to use a non-magnetic screwdriver just for safe peace of mind. After that, find an available 6 and 8 pin power connection, usually labeled PCIe on the connection itself. It's usually 6 plus 2, so connect those together and get them in. And that's it, you're all done. So just put the side panel back on and power up. So in order to test the Aurora and AMD graphics card, we've got single player and multiplayer benchmarks. The single player is going to allow you to replicate the same test at home using the FAPS benchmark tool. Simply start it at the beginning of the video, end it at the end, and compare the results and hopefully cement your decision as to if you want to upgrade to the new Aurora or buy the AMD R9 290 or 290X. But if you want to skip at any point, hit the skip to next benchmark button. Battlefield 4, however, with everything maxed out on 4 times MSAA, scored a minimum of 35, a maximum of 98, and an average of 66.874. Now we also disabled AA to see how things changed, and it scored a minimum of 51, a maximum of 123, and an average of 86.649. Now one thing I really want to point out with Battlefield is that soon we've got Mantle releasing 4 AMD specific graphics card, which at the moment is promising up to 45% increase in FPS in DirectX based games, including Battlefield 4. How that will translate exactly to in-game FPS results in a benchmark such as this, I don't know. But what I can say is the future definitely looks bright for AMD and Battlefield 4. If you'd like to skip to the next benchmark, go ahead and click the button at the lower right.
So next we got Crisis 3 from developer Crytek. Personally one of my favourite games on the PC platform. Not only is it graphically amazing, but also the storyline is quite immersive. And it's definitely a series of games I recommend playing through. But again, we got everything maxed out with motion blur disabled. And to reiterate that, I dislike motion blur at high frame rates and also on high refresh rate gaming monitors. I don't really think it's necessary, so I disable it. And we've also got 2TX SMAA on the anti-aliasing side of things. And he's got a minimum of 33, a maximum of 84, and an average of 58.1. Remember, this is the AMD R9 290. You'll be getting the 290X on the Alienware oh, website buying your new brilliant. Aurora, and with that, you probably average 60 at all times. But yeah, if you want to go ahead and skip to the next benchmark, please do so. Yeah? Well, I fucking can. Come on. For the next game, we got Metro and Last Light. And again, like Crisis, one of my favorite games on the PC platform. Last Light, definitely a vast improvement over 2033, particularly in the area of gunplay. But we've got almost everything maxed out. Again, motion blur set to low, but SSAA disabled. And I usually reserve SSAA to multi GPU crossfire solution simply because you take a huge performance hit. And in the case of Metro Last Light, having it disabled didn't really offer a noticeable difference either. I couldn't really see any jaggies. We had a minimum of 59, a maximum of 102 in an average of 74.042. But again, if you'd like to skip on to the next video, go ahead.
Next up we got Grid 2 using the in-game benchmark tool, super easy for you guys to replicate at home and we've got everything maxed out with 4 times MSAA and scored a minimum of 69, a maximum of 124 and an average of 92.400 and pretty much any racing game you buy on the PC platform is usually locked to 60 FPS and having this absolutely maxed out and staying above 60 at all times and being able to go over 60 makes this definitely a game you should check out on an Alienware and AMD graphics card, it really is a great experience and you know even pushing closer to 120 144 if you turn some of those things down as well and um, believe me grid 2 probably one of the first games i've actually appreciate at these high frame rates simply because they put a lot of attention into the detail of the backgrounds and crowd and the environment in general so yeah hugely impressed with the performance in grid 2 So for a final single player benchmark we got a game from Crystal Dynamics, one of my favourite franchises as a young gamer, Tomb Raider. Here we got everything maxed out with SSAA set to two times, and we scored a minimum of 37, a maximum of 67, and an average of 52.540. Now on release one of the big things here was AMD's Tress FX, in effect to make the hair look realistic, and I guess it's in the details and that's exactly what you want when you are playing on the PC platform, and Tomb Raider definitely best experienced on the PC. Just connect to 360 pad if you want, but I also tried disabling AA, and we scored a minimum of 52, a maximum of 91, and an average of 7 20.121. Again, you're going to be super happy with the performance here of Tomb Raider. And if you want to increase the FPS further, don't forget that buying on the Alienware website, you will be getting the 290X instead of the 290. But even so, go ahead and disable some of those things and see the FPS skyrocket even further. But yeah, super impressed with the performance here in Tomb Raider. If you'd like to skip to the multiplayer benchmarks, go ahead and click the button at the lower right. So next we've got multiplayer benchmarks with real-time FPS displayed and again captured using a second PC so the values you do see here are what you should expect to get at home using a similar setup but with that said the reason why we aren't doing minimum maximum and average FPS values is because you can never really be certain what's going on in a multiplayer game how many choppers are overhead how many rockets are being fired or just how many people are on the screen in general so in other words even if you compare it with an identical Alienware system with this identical 290 graphics card the numbers you get might be slightly different so take them with a pinch of salt. For this section I'm playing 32 vs 32 domination of Siege of Shanghai. This is probably the closest you'll get to replicating the same situation. It's infantry only which means no random variables will be coming into play. But like the single player benchmarks we've got everything maxed out with 4 times MSAA and we almost stay above 60 at all times with the odd drop. But if I was playing competitively no matter what the graphics card I would still drop some of those settings down just to stay closer to 120 at all times and the 290 or 290x you will be getting with an alien system from Alienware.com is definitely a great companion to play this game with. Now if you are playing multiplayer make sure you experiment with lighting quality and mesh quality. Those seem to be the two values that heavily affect the FPS so just try dipping those two down if you'd like a bit more frames per second. But yeah if you'd like to skip across to the next game go ahead and click the button in the lower right.
So for our final benchmark, we have League of Legends. And not by any stretch of the imagination am I a top League of Legends player. So in retrospect, I probably should have shipped Scar out, a North American player, to give his thoughts on it. But I do like a bit of Misfortune in bot lane or Nocturne in the jungle. And with that, we've got absolutely everything maxed out with anti-aliasing enabled and the FPS in the upper left. I'm not going to dwell on it too much because it's already ridiculously high. But let's just say you're going to have a lot of fun playing League of Legends on this system. So yeah, on to my final thoughts. So my final thoughts for the Anywhere Aurora R4. It's a fantastic system, no doubt about it, especially when upgraded with the AMD Radeon R9 290 graphics card. I struggle to find anything I dislike, and if I have to pinpoint something, it's going to be that this specific model was only shipped with a mechanical hard drive. And whilst it's one of the faster drives on the market, after using an SSD for several years now, particularly in some of the games like Battlefield 4, where there's no wait times at the beginning of multiplayer maps, it would have been nice to have an SSD. But again, there's plenty of 6 gigabyte per second ports on the motherboard, as well as space in the actual unit itself to fit in an SSD at a later date, or join the Alienware checkout process, if that's something you want. It's something I definitely want myself. But in terms of the graphics card and FPS performance, and all the games we threw at it and absolutely smashed all of it out of the park and again we want everything at absolutely maximum so you can turn down some of those settings and get even more fps if you want but when playing competitively this kind of system is exactly what you need it really is a gamer's dream machine to be quite honest with you and you've also got all the customization and the colors you can make it your own but it is a lot of money to drop on a system, so make sure it's exactly right for you and the components. Join the Alienware checkout for exactly what you want, simply because it's going to save you a lot of money moving forward if you don't have to upgrade it, because it all becomes expert built, of course, by Alienware. So I guess my final words on it is brilliant system if you can fork out for it. Definitely an upgrade over the X51 by a long shot if you are looking for a full tower system that's going to last you several years. And uh, yeah, I guess that pretty much wraps it up. Again, if you do buy on the Alienware website, you will be getting the 4820 as opposed to the 3820 Intel processor and the 290X as opposed to the 290 in here. So the FPS results you will be getting at home with those new systems will be higher than the one we've looked at here today. But yeah, I've been NBC here for the Team Dignitas YouTube page. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Again, as always, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. One of us will get back to you. But yeah, for now, catch you next time here on the Team Dignitas YouTube page.